I'm here trying to cover for Chris Jury, who is not able to be here today. Uh, fortunately, Carly gave all of the background uh, that I needed to talk about uh, understanding heritability. And really the question is, can corals adapt to climate change or can we do selective breeding relies on the heritability of these traits. And so this work was done in Hawaii on the island of Oahu, three different sites that have different environmental histories. We have eight different species, three species of Montipora, three species of Parites, and two species of Pocillophora. And we're using a clonal identical twin design to try to estimate broad sense heritability of these. And so what we have is, this is yeah. so we have uh, those eight species, we have the four genotypes from the locations, and then those were exposed to a variety of different conditions, control being present day temperature and pH. Ocean acidification is a reduction in pH only. Ocean warming is an uh, increase in temperature only, and then our combined future ocean conditions. And we let them recover, we very slowly ramp them, we measured their response over about eight months, so this is a, about a year long experiment. And we decided to use o coral calcification rate as an integrative uh, response variable to try to look across these characters, and what you can see is if we look at the here we're looking at, at one uh, case, Paredes compressa. We have four different genotypes here and we have the growth response. If we look at what happens with ocean warming relative to the white control, you can see that in general, it's bad for corals. What a surprise. Their growth rates are lower if we warm them up. Ocean acidification, we see less of a response uh, in general and in some of them there's no difference from the control. Uh, and then, of course, some genotypes do their own thing and do something completely different than the others. In this case, actually, acidification is far worse for this coral than warming is. Uh, and then, if we look at the combined, what we see is that in some of them, it ameliorates the effects. If you have warming and acidification, they actually do better than under just warming alone. And then we've got the oddball again doing something different. But for some corals, the future looks pretty grim. This coral, its calcification rate under, under warming and future ocean conditions is incredibly low. This coral, it's actually doing pretty well. And so if we ask the question, how do these traits respond to selection, we have to have and understand whether or not these traits are heritable. And if we look at the, across all of the species that we have done, so here are the two Pocilloperas, here are the Montiferas, here are the Parites, the answer is actually quite high. So we have a low uh, of about 0.2, we have a high of about 0.61, which means that if we look at the coral genotype, it explains between 20 and 60% of our variation in growth rate among all of these corals across these treatments, which means there is plenty of scope for both adaptation and selective breeding in these Hawaiian corals for the future. And Hopefully I'm still in time for questions. So this is Broad sense heritability, which is different than what Adriana was just talking about with narrow sense heritability, where you're actually looking at parent offspring regression. These are broad sense heritability, which is we're looking at the holobiont. So we don't, we cannot attribute some of this to the host or the symbionts or whatever it is. This is just sort of the overall proportion of the variation that is explained by the coral host, uh, the, the coral colony as a whole. We cannot partition variation. Well, some of, they're kind of all over the place. <laughs> uh, there's, there's not a good correlation uh, in terms of how they respond to temperature and acidification. Across all of them, there's actually no correlation in the heritability if we, if we model those independently. 
uh, and we see big differences across all of the, the coral species in terms of life history, um, symbiont specificity, and so on. Parite lobata is one that does pretty well, and it's way down, and Montifera is way, way up at the top. So we kind of see them all over the place again. Yeah. 